Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 101. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. This is more of a petty compliance story, but I'm bored and thought I would share. I left a job I had been at for 20 plus years to work for the town government where I lived. I had been salaried, but had burned out and took a job with a lot less stress, but also an hourly position. I was about 6 months into the job when I was looking at my hours for the week. I was expecting to be into overtime if I stayed until 5. I was planning to ask if I could leave whenever I hit 40 hours since it would be before 5. I realized my hours for the week were going to be short, even if I worked until 5. After calculating the time I worked each day and comparing it to the payroll software, Kronos, I talked to my boss and was told that the time clocked rounded to the nearest 15 minutes. I was pissed this was never explained to me when I started. Based on how things went when I started, it wasn't surprising. For those that don't know how this works, if you clock in between 7.53 and 8.07, the time clock records this as 8 o'clock. If you clock in between 8.08 and 8.22, the time clock records this as 8.15. When I did the calculations, there is a potential to abuse this to swing your hours worked by 2. 5 hours every week. Meaning, I could work 37. 5 hours and get paid for 40. Or I could work 40 hours and get paid for 37. 5. I looked up federal labor laws and this was absolutely legal. Fine. From then on, I never clocked out in the 7 minutes past every 15 minute increment. I'd leave for lunch at about 11.53 every day and get back at 1.07. Time clock records an hour. Get to work at 8.07. Leave at 4.52. If the time clock said 4.53. I'd go back and work until 5.08. I wouldn't have done this if I had been informed up front. Obviously I couldn't completely adhere to this schedule, but I tried my hardest. So the best example of my abuse of the system was that I lived about 5 minutes from work. Occasionally my kids would lock themselves out of the house. They got home around 3pm. The first time I asked my boss if I could go let them in, which seems stupid that I would need to ask. She says to me as I'm walking away. Make sure to clock out. I think it was meant as a joke, but obviously I was going to clock out. I'm hourly. It just rubbed me the wrong way. So, I got to the time clock, clocked out at 3.08, drove home, let my kids in, drove back and clocked back in at 3.20. Time clock sees a 3.15 clock out and a 3.15 clock in. If she hadn't said anything I wouldn't have rushed home or back and I would have had to make up that time. If how the time clock worked had been explained to me when I started, I wouldn't have abused it. Thank you. Next. For a number of years, whenever I do anything like talk a walk, take the garbage out, do housework, anything like that, I feel I need to take a shower right after. No idea why, it's how my body responds. I've managed to work around this by doing everything I can before taking a shower, so that I don't waste water or electricity. My parents know this about me. They have for years. However, this one day, I woke up thinking I didn't have to do any chores that day and I went ahead and had my shower. About 10 minutes later, my mother asked me to do something. So after I did that I asked is that all? Yes. So I hope in the shower again, grab clean clothes. 10 minutes later, she asked me to do something else. Again, I do that. Ask if there was anything else. No. Hop in the shower. Then she did this a third time. She didn't take the hint. It was at this point my dad intervened and asked if this was really it. That there was no more. She finally said no and I went for another shower. In the period of about 3 hours, I had 3 showers and now had a ton of laundry because my mother kept forgetting how my body responded to chores. And I used 3 times as much water because of it. Thank you. Next. Hello people of Reddit. My friend who works in construction told me this story and I thought that I'd share as it is super funny. So for your information this happened in 2015. When the company had ordered 20 new fleet trucks, they were going good for everyone. Except for this guy. We'll call Bert. He somehow kept damaging the newer trucks. When he damaged his second truck the supervisor kept complying. And giving him a new truck as he asked for. Meet everyone. Bert. Supervisor mechanic. So to get into it my friend tells me that at the company he works for everyone is loaned a company truck. 
they are responsible for making sure that the truck is okay and that everything is going smoothly. When repairs are needed you take it to the company mechanic and they take care of things. The supervisor handed everyone a key to their new truck and it went like this. Supervisor. Hey everybody I'm sure as you saw today our new trucks came in so everybody line up and get a key to your truck. Everyone gets their key and goes forward with to the work week. Then Bert came to mechanic with with his truck and he said it's feeling sluggish. Mechanic said to Bert 25 minutes later. Mechanic. Well figured what is wrong with your truck. Bert. What's going on? Mechanic. Apparently you damaged the drive shaft. Bert. Oh wow. I wonder how that happened. Now mechanic in his report said that there was a lot of dirt under the bay of the truck. Since their new mechanic made the assumption that he likely went off-roading and damaged it. The company had had two new spare trucks. Bert apparently came into supervisor's office and said. Bert, I need a new truck. Supervisor, wait. What happened to yours? Bert, the drive shaft is damaged. Supervisor, okay. Well we have another truck you can borrow until yours it fixed. Just be more careful. Bert with an unappreciative tone said fine and later drove off. Three days later a AAA flatbed delivered his loaner to the yard. He apparently snapped the front left axle and sustained some bumper damage to the truck. Supervisor is pissed. Bert then comes into the office and tells supervisor. Cue the malicious compliance. Bert, I need a new truck. Supervisor, yeah I see. Pointing to the flatbed with the truck on it. So supervisor gives him a new truck as he asked for. A 1989 Ford F-150. Bert, this truck isn't new. Supervisor, yeah, it new to you. Bert, why can't I have a newer one? Supervisor, well you've damaged your first two. You are extreme liability for us right now just be happy that we are giving you something. Bert looking dissatisfied says fine. And drives away. Five days later the clutch was shot on the 89 pickup. The thing is the clutch on the truck was fine. It was inspected before it was given to Bert. So now mechanic and supervisor were suspicious. Bert then came to supervisor's office and said. Bert, I need a new truck. Supervisor, yeah I heard. Bert walks over the the last new truck on the lot. Then supervisor says. Supervisor, follow me to the back lot. Bert follows. Supervisor then proceeds to take a tarp off a 1977 Ford F-150. The supervisor says to Bert. Supervisor, here is your new truck. Bert looked disgusted but he had to take it because supervisor wouldn't let him have one of the new trucks until his was fixed and paid to fix the clutch on the 1989 truck. Needless to say Bert never broke his truck again. As the yard had a even older 1969 Ford F-100. Bert probably realized that if he didn't shape up his driving that he would once again get a new truck. Also Bert had a lot of experience in construction so that is one of the reasons why he wasn't fired until two years later. Thanks for reading. Thank you. Next. So a touch of backstory. I have two dogs. One being my own. Male. Rhodesian Ridge backslash Staffy. And another being my mum's. Female. Pure Golden Retriever. My dog is named RJ and he is a rescue dog. I love him to bits. And mum's dog mischief has been with us since a pup. So on to today's little story of malicious compliance. So yesterday the dogs had been super restless at some stupid time in the early morning and I ignored thinking that they were just in a play mood. I was wrong and they both went potty in the back room of the house. Being the good owner I am I cleaned it with no complaints or anything like that. Then comes today. So yet again the dogs are restless at 4am. So I get up and let them out while I also go to and they come back inside after a couple of minutes looking a lot better than before. I go back to bed thinking all is okay. Now just some insight on the rule is in my house when it comes to dogs and potty. First one up first one clean or let out. Seems reasonable enough right? Nope not today. I wake up at 9.15am just laying in bed on TikTok. I haven't gotten out of bed cause I normally don't till about an hour after I wake up. It's just a thing I do. It's about 10 something where I hear my mum get and go to the back room. Where the bathroom slash toilet is. And she comes back after doing business where she opens my door and say I have to clean up the doggy doo doo because it's my dog that did it. Now does anyone remember the rule? I try to explain that she was there she should have done it but no oh my dog my responsibility. Akai let's have some fun and prove my point. 
I get up out of bed angry as heck. She tried to talk to me while I walked past her door and I shut her down saying I don't want to hear it. I clean up the mess, which took less than 5 minutes and walked back to pick my dog's bowl to feed him. After placing RJ's food bowl down I walk back to my room and sit on my bed on my phone. Where she comes into my room saying I haven't fed her dog. Note, I normally fed both dogs cause well I am the only one who remembers their diets. Me being the smart ass I am state in the most sarcastic way I possible could. I dog M Y Y Y responsibility. At which I continued saying do you see how annoying it is when you break a rule? And she just turned around and HFPM. Go to love some sweet malicious compliance. Thank you. Next. Edit. Fixed use of acronyms. Repost from r slash pro revenge. I was told that it would be more suitable here. Obligatory. First time poster. English not my first language. Happened a long time ago. But it was so memorable that I still have it in mind very well. TL. Doctor at the end. Background. I'm from Germany and we have quite a thorough driving training over here. Basic training and 12 mandatory lessons for defined conditions. 4x Autobahn. 5x Country Road. 3x Night. Lessons must be taken from a professional, licensed driving instructor. Learner cars are clearly labeled as such. Fashion. Driving school. Cast. OP equals OP. Instructor equals badass driving instructor. Douche equals douchebag. Setting. OP takes a driving lesson in a clearly labeled learner car. Instructor wants to train ARPS reverse into a very tight parking space skill in a narrow street of a residential area with cars parking on both sides of the road and merely enough space for one car to drive along, no two-way traffic possible, let alone passing by. This is a common situation in that city and therefore the reason why it needs to be trained. OP has a little trouble, needs to check all sides as well as the cars parking on the other side of the road, and is very focused on the task. Meanwhile douche approaches in his car. OP fails to maneuver that giant, actually tiny in you. S. Scale. Car into the tiny space two times in a row which triggers douche start to honking like fury. OP looks at instructor. What the heck did I do wrong? Instructor looks at OP. Keep calm. No problem. Turn off the engine and turn on the emergency blinkers. OP. We are blocking the road. Shouldn't I get along? Instructor. Nope. Turn off the engine and turn on the emergency blinkers. You'll say why. OP turns off the engine and turns on the emergency blinkers. Instructor. Get out and wait for me. OP gets out and waits for instructor. Instructor comes over to my side. Follow me and do the same as me. Instructor slowly theatrically walks around the car and carefully inspects every detail. Takes special care for the rear side. Checks if there's enough space between our car and the parked cars and even takes the time to look under the car. OP tries to do something similar. All fast takes a whole minute if not more. Instructor shakes his head. Looks at OP and actually shrugs his shoulders. Follow me. Instructor walks over to Douche and signs him to lower the window. OP follows instructor. Douche turns down the window with a facial expression of total confusion. Instructor. Sir. Is there anything wrong with our car? We inspected it carefully, but we cannot find any problem. Douche, what? Instructor, repeats, is there anything wrong with our car? We inspected it, but there seems to be no problem. Douche, angry, why the FCK do think there should be a problem? Instructor, in perfect law speak, sir, according to 1. Stvo, road traffic regulations, you are only allowed to use acoustic warning signs if you see an imminent hazard for yourself or others. Since you yourself are most probably not in a hazard while waiting for another car to go, I must assume that either our car itself or our maneuvering constitutes an imminent hazard. Therefore I'd like to know what the problem is. Douche. Angry. I'm in a hurry. Instructor. Oh. That's all? No imminent hazard for yourself or others? Douche. FCK no. Instructor theatrically making a thinking face and playing dumb. So you actually use the acoustic warning sign although there was no imminent hazard for yourself or others? Douche. Hell yeah. Get along. Instructor. I see. Just a friendly reminder. According to 1. Stvo. You are only allowed to use acoustic warning signs if you see an imminent hazard for yourself or others. A violation of 1. Stvo can be punished with a 5 euro fine 10 euros if other people are harassed by your action. 
Meanwhile a third car approaches the scenery and is blocked by us. Instructor. Oh. I see there's another car waiting. I don't want that guy to wait longer than necessary. Please keep that aforementioned mind. I am very sorry that you had to wait such a long time now. If I didn't have to inspect the car, then we all would have been gone a long time ago. Thank you very much. Drive safe and have a good day. OP let's go. Instructor and OP enter the car. OP turns on the engine. Instructor initiates a high five and makes sure it can be seen by douche. Finally, we cancel the parking attempt and drive along very peacefully. With exactly 30 km slash h of course, as limited for that area. TL. Doctor. Impatient douchebag honks at me during driving lesson. Earns maximum possible delay from badass driving instructor. Thank you. Next. So I've worked in the food industry for a while. Learned a thing or two thanks largely to some really awesome co-workers. Shout out to my peeps if you recognize this story. So when I started there, the place was legendary. Almost like a cult following on certain dishes. We operated on a rotating menu for variety sake. Well when I actually started cooking, not cleaning or portering, I learned from the aces there, they taught me make food you wouldn't mind eating. So I did, until, new management. They said in no uncertain terms follow the recipes exactly, don't adjust anything. Well we were adjusting minor things, like seasonings or quantities, when we knew the projected amount wouldn't be enough due to some obvious reasons. Q compliance. We did exactly as the recipe said. Measured all ingredients, cooked as written, in the exact quantities on paper. Let's just say the attendance numbers tanked fast. The quality didn't hold up to guests' expectations, especially not what they were accustomed to. Didn't help they removed some of our more popular items cause they weren't considered real recipes to corporate. Wish I could say this has a happy ending but I left there when I finally got a near dream job. Last I heard, like late last year, business is bad and not many eat there, or remember it exists sometimes. When I say near, I mean I'm working in my dream business, just not the right department yet. Thank you, next. Okay, a bit of a backstory first. I have a slight case of arthritis and gout in my foot. Other than taking a handful of pain pills when they flare up, the doctor also recommended that I freeze a bottle of water and roll my foot over it. So I did, and I do. My wife and kids know what it is for, and they avoid touching it like my foot has the plague or something. A few weeks ago my father-in-law and wife sold his house, and they bought a new house across the country. He is about 6 months away from retirement, so he asked if he could stay in our basement until he has done his work, while his wife moves into the new house. I like the guy, so we said it would be okay. Unfortunately living with him is like having a second teenager around. He is always in the bathroom, constantly on the TV, and is eating up all of our food without asking. Chips go missing, snacks, stuff he could buy himself, but why buy it when it's already here for free? I got a little pissed when I went to make a bowl of cereal one morning, and I noticed my cereal was empty. Oh, mine was empty, so I just used up the rest of yours he said while eating my cereal. He is family though, so I've been putting up with it. One day my foot started hurting, so I went to grab my foot bottle and it was missing. I asked my wife, but she didn't know where it had went. So I just took some painkillers and rested. My Phil came home from work, and said hey, I realized I sent all my ice packs with my wife, so I borrowed one of yours, I hope that is okay. That's when I see him pull my foot bottle from his lunch bag. I couldn't help thinking of all the times that I had rubbed my stinky feet on it, and also rubbed it all over the dirty floor. I could have said something, but all I said was sure no problem with a smile. Every morning now when he makes his lunch he puts that dirty bottle in there with it, and I just smile. Don't worry all of his food is wrapped up, so there's no real transfer of foot to food.